Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mike here. And behind me is one of the most spectacular views that you'll ever see. But you'll have to take my word for it because right now it's shrouded in fog. But I um, just want to say hey to you all from everybody here at Catalyst. Um, I've been reflecting today. And uh, it's, for, it's early morning, crack of dawn. Just up kind of reflecting on a number of things. Um, about just life and, and, and work and family. Um, it's a very important time for our family right now. We're on an extended road trip and uh, we are taking precious cargo um, uh, to drop her off at college. And um, uh, it's just an interesting time. Almost 30 years ago to the day, uh, my parents drove me from Portsmouth, Virginia to Newport, Rhode Island dropped me off at the uh, Naval Academy Prep School, my first time away from home, and man, was that an experience. Um, I have to say I didn't like it. <laughs> I did not enjoy that experience. But that's really what I'm reflecting on today. Um, sacrifice and options. Because somehow, sacrifice and options, um, they go together. 30 years ago, when my parents dropped me off at that, that school, and I remember the shouting, and I remember the hazing, and I remember the, uh, the physical challenges and the mental challenge of just not quitting. Um, because it, I have to be honest, I wanted to quit. Um, I've been taken out of my comfort zone. I've been taken away from the, pl the place and the people I knew. And um, the only thing left was, was survival. And so uh, I survived, right? And so what I wanted to do is go back to what I knew. And so um, um, I couldn't. I had to sacrifice what I knew in order to take hold of what, whatever was next. And um, the only reason I didn't quit is because I told myself uh, long before that that I would just never quit anything. So I sacrificed that. Um, what I knew and I sacrificed comfort and I sacrificed knowing what would happen next and I just moved forward to the next thing. Um, not long after that, I found myself in, in um, ROTC at Norfolk State University. And um, there are a number of sacrifices that came with that. And I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine who had been working since she was a you know, teenage, mid-teens, and she was probably at this point mid-twenties, and she said, you know, why why waste all that money in college? You, you need to be, you should be working and <laughs> making money. You're not making money. I'm making more, more money in all that business. Um, I don't know. At that time, I, I recognized that for the goals I had for my long term, I had to sacrifice that immediate desire to make some kind of an income, to have some money, to have, to buy nice things and all that. And so I had to, you know, decide I would continue to be broke to some extent. Um, and I thought about, you know, even my parents, my grandparents, um, the sacrifices that they made in order to take care of their families. Because there's, there's always options. There's things that you, um, you can do, there's choices that you make. And, um, it's important to think about what those choices are and why you're making them, who you're making them for, and, and what's at stake. So, sacrifice some things. Um, even if in, in Army ROTC in college and knowing where my career was headed, um, I had to sacrifice some things maybe that I wanted to do that were outside of the bounds of that career path. So, uh, sacrifice. And so then, go on to active duty and you know, you're kind of at the will of where the military wants to send you and where you're going to be best utilized. And so you sacrifice some freedom, you sacrifice some choices, maybe. And uh, so it just kind of goes on and on. And so uh, I went to graduate school. And it seems like that was just five years plus of nothing but sacrifice. There were times when we you know, family really wanted me to be there to have maybe have some fun or watch a show or just pause and do this thing. And in that moment, um, I made a decision maybe to um, 
continue writing that paper, finish that dissertation, go to the lab, but try to really get through this process. And so, um, you know, do, do an armor career with, with so many, so many jobs and finish up grad school there. And, um, I remember coming, um, finishing up grad school, doing internship. Um, I was actually at Walter Reed for my internship and I thought I was going one place and I planned for years in grad school, kind of what I was going to do after. And I got a phone call one afternoon that said, no, you know what you thought you were going to do? Not doing that. We want you somewhere else. So I tried to fight that, but ultimately I sacrificed what I believed I, I thought I wanted because I, I, there was one out I thought I could, I had, and I decided not to take it. So I went with that assignment and um, I sacrificed what I thought, even what I told people and expectations that I created for myself and I created in others, um, sacrificed that. And so um, I found myself eventually um, getting toward the end of my career and, uh, and, I, and I began to look back and there's so many things that um, I look back on thinking, you know, it would have been nice if um, recognizing some of the time lost and all that. And, um, and so because, you know, at, an, at the uh, end of a career, what do you do? It's, it's kind of what you do. And um, those last couple of assignments, though, um, the one um, that I ultimately went to um, after internship and some time working at Walter Reed, would be um, Army Recruiting Command, where I would um, help lead a team of um, coaches and trainers. It's actually the job that would help prepare me for what we do now. Um, and then uh, the very last assignment, um, it was interesting, but you know, I, I was um, able to pour into the lives of some, of some young uh, psychologists and soldiers and people kind of um, beginning their careers and um, that was that was just that was pretty rewarding um, and so all of a sudden as you pour out and you begin to reflect on what you gathered along the way and what you're able to share um, some of that begins to make sense but then you come to the point where you're sitting um, in this place, where I come to the point where I'm sitting in this place and I'm reflecting and I, and I remember that 30 years ago, my parents were going through the same process that I'm going through now, 30 years. And in that moment, not knowing what was gonna happen in my life, wondering why, why this decision, there's so many other things I could have done, why this? but just sticking with it. We emerge now at a place where um, we're taking my daughter to college and she is, uh, she's going to college at a time where things are about as unpredictable as they can get. They're literally changing from day to day. And so we're, we're taking her, she's going to be a, you know, quite a, a long way from home. And um, they actually asked that she come or they asked, you know, they required that she come two weeks early. They're going to, they were going to quarantine them in place. And so um, that word came, you know, um, we, we had we had one plan that was about six, six weeks away from execution. And um, all of a sudden we find ourselves in a place where we have one week to change everything, um, to make this little trip happen and to get her to to college at the time designated and so we were able to to drop everything to adjust and to um, get on the road and, and you know, ultimately get her where she needs to be so that's a gift um, and then we discover that the original plan well now the the secondary plan now you know plan B changes again because now they want them to test before they come um, and if you've ever if you tried to get a COVID-19 test lately you know uh, what kind of a 
the kind of craziness that is. And so um, it looks like, and then so then they, they mailed out tests. That test hadn't got to us. So um, it looks like she may have to, whereas before she was going to stay on campus, it looks like now they may put her in an alternate spot until test, re test results come back. Um, I wasn't all that keen on leaving my little baby, my baby girl, um, on campus, much less some other alternate place. But um, we have the flexibility to stay in place until she gets situated. That's a gift. But that gift was a result of years of sacrifice. Today, all of the sacrifice makes sense. All of it makes sense um, because the options that we have today are based on all that sacrifice over the years. Even the sacrifice of giving up certainty, retiring, in effect, retiring early when there were so many, there was so much left on the table, um, giving up the put the opportunity to have a good, safe government job, maybe safe. <laughs> Um, giving up the opportunity to go and apply maybe for other things, but to kind of step out on our own and say, we're going to have faith. We're going to do this. We were meant for this. And so today, the sacrifice makes sense. Why am I telling y'all this? Well, because the likelihood is that um, you are in a place where you're having a sacrifice and it's hard. I want to encourage you to not give up. I want to encourage you to keep going um, because it's going to make sense. Um, it may not make sense today. It may be painful today. And there's so many other things you see that you could be doing today. But you hang in there because when it really counts, your sacrifice is going to pay off in the form of you having options and opportunity. So if we can help you with that, we're here. So you hang in there. All right. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Dr. Mike, out.